So this is Ben Holken recording a short video on how to use Siemens SimCenter Test Lab for audio replay and filtering, including importing WAV files from externally generated applications. So these are just WAVs in this case that have been created from uh, audio set, which is a set of YouTube clips. So launch just the desktop and advanced from the applications directory for SimCenter test lab. It's going to create a new project for me by default. I get a little error message here, which I'm inquiring about telling me that time signal calcul calculator add-in cannot be loaded. Um, it looks like there's not enough tokens, but that shouldn't be the case. We should have plenty of tokens for this add-in. I'm just going to okay it for now. Um, there are a range of add-ins that we can select from when we open a desktop and advance or indeed any application in test lab. Not all of the options that we saw there in the menu are available on the UTS workspace. We have desktop and advanced and we have modal analysis, but on my local installation here, I've installed a number of Mod of uh, applications, including those two, but also many others. In the add-ins options, I have a various different add-ins here, including audio replay and filtering, which I've selected from a previous session. These are all held in memory from my previous sessions. I've added in modal analysis. At some point, I've added in data block editor. Signature throughput processing I've included here to do some processing on these waveforms and the time signal calculator, which is the one I'm getting the error message about so not sure why i'm getting that message i can turn that off in fact i don't think i need it i will still have time data selection down here and time data processing which are the applications that i need for this particular exercise anyway i've got my new project i'm going to browse to the location on my downloads folder within the computer where I've saved these waveforms. So I've got two versions, some raw data and some corrected data. The raw data come in different formats. Uh, some of them have got 25 kilohertz sampling, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, others have got 16 kilohertz. So I beg your pardon, this is 48 kilohertz sample frequency, 24 kilohertz span. So Nyquist frequency, it's a 10 second long file and you can see the x-axis increment given here. Um, those are the raw data. The corrected data have been down sampled to 16 kilohertz. So if I select these ones, there are exactly the same number of them and they've got individual IDs 0000, 0001, 0276, 1131. Uh, these are actually from a set of data from my collaborator at SiteHive. So if I have a look at the properties here on this one as well, you can see this should be 16 kilohertz sampling indeed, and it's 10 seconds long. One of these raw data files happened to not be the full length, uh, the full 10 second length. It's slightly shorter, so it's only a six second length. In the corrected version, this has been padded, zero padded. So it's also 10 seconds long, but from six seconds to 10 se hmm, that's a bit surprising. 25 kilohertz, am I looking at the wrong one? Yes, uh, hang on, corrected. Should have been corrected to 16 kilohertz. What is happening? Not sure, that might be a problem with where I've copied it from. I have to come back to that another time. Um, we'll select all of these four, WAV files, these are still in the WAV file format. Test Lab recognizes the WAV file format inside. It can see there's one channel of data. Indeed, we can plot that channel of data if we use a front back display. We can right click on here and make this preview mode and we can immediately see the nature of that file and we can hit the audio replay and filter. And oh, we get an error message to say it cannot start the player because it doesn't like that sample frequency, which is potentially a problem I was having before, not during this video, I'm thinking out loud, it needs to be 32 to 51.2 kilohertz to be able to play this back over the speakers. 
if we select the raw data file, should be able to drive in here. Similarly, that gets previewed. We can audio replay it. This one is 48 kilohertz, so we should be able to play this pretty well. And I should be able to get the sound. Oh, I have the same problem. Forty-eight kilohertz. It looks like it should be within that range. That wasn't what I wanted to show right now. I just wanted to show that these can be viewed by test app. But what we should really do is import them. So I'll list all blocks within that folder, right? So those are the various measurements. I can right click those, add them to the input basket. This is like a working directory. So now I've got some links in the input basket. I can then go to subsequent work blocks, time data editor in particular, time data selection, I beg your pardon, in particular, I can replace everything within here. In this drop down, I've got those various four files. I can show them all. I can turn them all on and I can save them within this project as throughput data files, TDS files. Um, and I'll do that here so that when I go back into the navigator, you will see that within this section, I now have these various throughput data files in a native test lab file format, this LDSF format. Now this these data will be possible to be, he says, replayed because they've been converted. Oh, come on, this is disappointing. Let's uh, not worry too much about that part right now. How long's my video duration? Don't want to talk for too long. Don't know how long I've been talking for. Zoom doesn't give me any duration. I think I will end it there. And I'll come back subsequently and do another video to show how to then process these data into waterfalls. In fact, no, I'll just quickly do it now. Right, so here, these are acoustic data channel types. I want 180, 28 lines in the spectrum, which will give me a spectral resolution of 62.5. And then, so for a 62.5 Hertz resolution to calculate one FFT, it, I should take the reciprocal of this 62.5. Can't do it in my head. Take the reciprocal 0.16 seconds, 0 0.016 seconds. So here I'll track on time. Total duration doesn't really matter. We'll have a 0 0.016 second increment. So that means for every 0.16 seconds, seconds of data, I will get one FFT. Okay, so then I close this one. I've selected all of these. It's going to give me a throughput folder in the active processing. So it's doing measurement one, two, three, four, all of those in this list here. If I browse through here, these are my throughput data. There's a link to the original data file there. That looks familiar. Drill into the track processing, fixed sampling time data in the waterfalls. I've got acoustic waterfalls. Here's an auto power. Uh, you can see the level is given in dB and that those are those there for my audio data which are also sitting in my section that I'm working from here. Again, I can grow back in here. I can create a color map. I can right click on that one, turn it onto preview mode, select this set of FFTs, right click over here to change the format to DB. And should, if it was happy with those data, similarly be able to play those as we've seen, this uh, got a bit of a problem with the sampling rate at the moment. I need to follow up on that. That's the end of this video. Thank you.